Well, welcome everybody to our uh, June 1st Friday Forum. And uh, we have a, a great program as usual. But as usual, I have some announcements uh, to give to all of you. Uh, first, let me just give you the lineup for our first Friday Forums for the, um, the rest of the year as, as, as much as we have them together yet. Um, July we have off. I think everybody knows we take July off and First Friday Forums. Um, August, uh, we're working on having Senate, one, either Senator um, um, Johnson or Senator um, Baldwin uh, come. Uh, if any of you ever have tried to book um, events or times with any po politician, especially federal politicians, um, it'd probably have more success having your teeth pulled. Um, so we're working on that, and uh, one of the two of them we're really thinking we'll have here for the August, we would like to have Senator Baldwin because we've not really heard from her, especially in her capacity as the newest senator. So that's our focus. But as our backup, we're looking at um, having Mary Ispiter, who is the new chair of the um, committee that Tim Sullivan chaired, working on um, um, uh, work uh, attainment and, 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 and training our workforce for the future. Uh, kind of tied with our program for today. So that's the August uh, f uh, First Friday Forum. In September, we're going to have Reed Hall, who is the new Executive Director of the Wisconsin Economic Development Corp. And he'll here, be here to tell us on how things are going and how he's cleaned things up over there. Um, October, we'll have our legislators back for their legislative review and we'll be at near the end of the year, so it should be pretty interesting and be able to give us a lot of good information as to what happened and what um, will happen in the future. And in November, we are going to have, last year in November, we started with, we decided to have an economist come in and kind of give a presentation to us about what they thought the economy looked for the next year for Sheboygan County, Wisconsin primarily, and also the U.S. We're going to do the same thing. We're still working on lining up that economist. Uh, and December, we haven't decided yet, so that's still in the works. Um, as far as announcements, a, a number of announcements that are uh, important to give. Uh, the chamber is working on a new uh, CFO roundtable info night. Um, so we don't have the details on when that's going to be or where it's going to be. We do. Morning, morning of June 20th. Oh. From 7.30 to 9 o'clock at the chamber in the large conference room. Uh, the morning of June 20th. Um, at at the chamber, okay. Well, anyway, uh, stay tuned if you're interested um, for all the details. And as as usually, you can go on the chamber website and get all this information. Um, focal point. Um, uh, next focal point is on June 19th. Not the next one, but uh, a focal point presentation is on June 19th at 7 a.m. entitled "Next Generation Marketing." Um, also, a focal point plus program on June 11th is uh, entitled Building the Team, and the speaker will be Sidney Moncrief. For those of you who are old enough to remember the, old, the early Bucks, Sidney Moncrief was a, a, the key star of, a, of many Bucks teams, and so he's going to be here to speak. Um, there's also a chamber member only, and when I say chamber member only, I mean um, the chamber has extended to all of the other county chambers the ability to participate in our chamber events at the chamber rate in an effort to bring our chambers closer together. So for all the chamber members, as so defined, um, there's going to be a chamber member main stage uh, entitled Fast Forward to 2014, really focused on the um, health care changes that are going to take place in 2014. That is sponsored by United Healthcare. Um, again, June 20th. And probably most importantly, lunch is free. So remember June 20th, and it's at Pine Hills. So uh, a double benefit. So June 20th, um, um, United Healthcare is sponsoring presentation on, on changes um, in the healthcare uh, laws. Uh, there's a business after hours on June 25th at Bookworm Gardens. If, if some of you aren't aware that that's uh, sort of the new um, uh, park, uh, children's park, um, just before you get to UW uh, Sheboygan. Uh, it's really magnificent um, and you'd enjoy it. Again, that's June 25th from 5 to 7. 
And then last but not least, uh, the golf outing is on September 11th and the format has changed this year. So you didn't have the one day where you got to set your alarm and all your clocks, whatever, for, so you could call in as quick as you could at, at 8 o'clock. Now it's a shotgun start. Um, and so you can just go online and, and, and fill in when you want to uh, add your name and everybody will be part of that shotgun start. Space is limited, so if you want to play. Right, yeah, space is limited, so don't wait too long. Usually fills up. Um, two last things before I announce our speakers. Um, you know, you always get these surveys and you're wondering about, you know, did they listen to the survey? Well, we took the survey last month and we did listen. One of the things that was requested was cookies at lunch. There were cookies at lunch, so remember to take the cookies. So, that was a relatively easy thing to arrange. Um, and, um, You'd be surprised. Yeah, yeah. Um, the last announcement I just would maybe just like to bring you up to speed on is I think you all are aware that um, the Chamber and this Business Advocacy Committee has been working on on the issue of Sheboygan County being non-attainment. And by that, as some of you may not know, um, we, Sheboygan County has been deemed to have exceeded certain um, ozone levels. Um, and so there, there are certain requirements or restrictions that are placed onto the county. We're the only county in the whole state, the whole county that has that designation. Half of uh, Kenosha County has that. Um, and we believe it's very unfair um, the way they do it because it's based on a monitoring station on Lake Michigan by Terry Andre Park. So it, it, really, it really is measuring primarily the winds carrying the, the particulates from the south up here. And we live with it. We don't think that's right. We're fighting an uphill battle because we're, we're battling the federal government on this one, the bureaucracy. But we're going to fight on. Even though the chances of success may be low, we're fighting on. and. Um, we, um, um, the committee's been working with the EPA and the DNR, and we've just finalized a letter that's going to be sent to the um, EPA. The, the DNR is actually going to send the letter, and we'll follow up with some letters um, um, afterward. But it's going to, le it's going to ask the county um, or the EPA to um, at least release uh, most of Sheboygan County. I'm just going to say primarily from. Um, west of I-43, that's not exact, but for our purposes here, it's good enough. West of I-43, basically take it off non-attainment um, because we believe that the um, statistics show that there's reason to believe that that's not the case for that part of the county. And then we have to battle on for the rest of the county. And in that regard, we're probably going to have to try to ask that a second monitoring station be put in. And I'm happy to say that through our state uh, legislative contingent, um, there was um, the, the um, budget had an addition to it that would provide funds to put in a second monitoring station. Now that hasn't passed yet because the budget hasn't passed yet, Mike, right? Well, today, but I, I don't have. Yeah, so, um, so that's a good news of, as well. So we're making progress. You know, the, the goal line still is a, a distance away, but we can see it a little bit clearer. So we'll keep fighting on. So with that, we're going to move on to our program. And as we announced, we have um, um, three speakers. And we thought, again, there's a lot of talk about um, preparing our workforce uh, for our employers um, in Sheboygan County. And we have, um, and, our, and our three secondary institutions have actually been working on that. We may, we may not all be aware of that. And we thought, it's time to bring them in and let them talk about how they're dealing with the, the needs to um, um, uh, educate our workforce to be better able to be employed in our businesses. So we have with us today uh, Jackie Joseph Silverstein who is the Dean at UW Sheboygan and we have Lakeland um, LTC Lakeland uh, Lakeshore Technical College President Mike Lancer and Lakeland College President Dan Eck. And so I think Jackie is going to go first, and each of them is going to give some, an overview of what they're doing, and then afterwards we'll have questions and answers. So Jackie will go first, then Mike, and then Dan. So did they miss anything? Anybody have anything else to bring up? Okay, good. With that, uh, Jackie, I think you have to hold this because it doesn't, to hold it up here doesn't work well. Thanks, Dave. 
Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here today to be able to tell you a little bit about UW Sheboygan and the kinds of things we're doing to try to help provide a, an educated workforce to the county. Um, since I'm the first speaker, on behalf of my colleagues who are joining me today, we'd like to thank the chamber leadership for inviting us today. And also, on your tables, we decided not to use PowerPoint because we got the word that PowerPoint isn't necessarily so easy to see in this room, and it's such a beautiful day. Who would want to close draperies if we had them here? So instead, what we did was we each provided um, you with a one-page overview of our our colleges and you'll find those on your tables. So I'm going to tell you first a little bit about UW Sheboygan in general. I'm thinking most of you know much of this and then I'll tell you about the programming and courses that we're offering and how we believe we are helping to meet workforce needs in this community. As you all likely know, we are part of a larger system. We are part of one of the 13 UW campuses, and we provide the first two years of a baccalaureate degree to the students uh, in Sheboygan County and uh, in other parts of our region as well. There are certain advantages to being part of a larger system, a small campus and a large system, and I'll talk a little bit more about those in a few seconds. The UW colleges are a critical part of the U UW system's commitment to what's called the, uh, the original Wisconsin idea. And in education, what that Wisconsin idea meant was to bring the intellectual capital of the UW system to all parts of the state and to bring a UW education to all parts of the state. And that's what we're doing at UW Sheboygan. The degree that we grant is the Associate of Arts and Sciences degree, and we often call ourselves a liberal arts college, and sometimes we talk about getting the first two years of your liberal arts education on our campus. And that is indeed true, but very often that's a little misleading, and that liberal arts colleges very often offer a wide array of courses that can help students to prepare for other careers as well. And that's the case at UW Sheboy. We have wonderful faculty and we teach courses in philosophy and history and sociology, yes. But we also offer business courses. You can uh, take three different levels of accounting at our institution. We offer pre-engineering courses and pre-education courses, pre-health career courses. If there is someone who wants to go on to be a doctor or a vet, you can do those pre-med courses or pre-vet courses on our campus as well. So there is a significant amount of breadth to the courses we offer, although our degree is the Associate of Arts and Sciences degree. You're even able to do something called an emphasis in our, on our campus, which is to take three or four courses in a focused area, and very often those courses will be courses that will later become part of your uh, bachelor's degree major. By being part of a system, we can offer a wide variety of courses that a small school with 800 students might not normally be able to offer. We have uh, open to our students all of the courses within the UW College's online uh, program. And in addition, we also work with our partner colleges to offer co courses that any one of us might not be able to offer on our own because we don't have the expertise at our site or we don't have enough students to be able to offer a course in a cost-effective manner. So our students benefit from being part of a larger system while being on a small campus. Also on our campus, just so you know everything that's available there, is we do have a continuing education unit that's been focusing on personal enrichment and uh, programming for K-12 students. And I'm hoping to bring more professional development activities to the college that uh, employers would like to see us doing. And I plan to reach out to some of you over the summer and find out what some of those things are that you'd like to see us do. 
You probably also know that Extension Services is co-located on our campus. And something you might not know is some of our four-year schools have programs on our campus. Platteville and Oshkosh actually offer some on-site programs that I'll talk about in a little bit because they're very much focused on, on workforce in the community. Who are our students? Well, we have approximately 800 students. Those numbers go up and down depending on the economy. 37% are over 22, so we have a fair number of adult students, and 54% of those students are part-time. Most of them part-time because they work, but sometimes there are students who come part-time just because they can't afford full, a full-time education, and they kind of move in and out of the system. So what are the programs we offer, and how does the education we provide impact the development of an educated workforce in Sheboygan County? Well, as I said, we have a very focused mission. We offer the Associate of Arts degree, but we offer a wide range of courses that allow them to begin the pursuit of their bachelor's degree. I already mentioned this. In addition to pre-education, pre-engineering, pre-health and business, we offer all of the uh, first or second level courses in the STEM fields. If you want to be a chemist, you can start at UW Sheboygan and get those chemistry those chemistry courses in the first two years. If you want to be a geographer, you can take those courses on our campus. So you can start here and then move on to any one of 200 majors at other institutions, and many of those are very related to things people might want to come back here uh, and, and, and find, their, find their career back home here in Sheboygan. As I said, we partner with our four-year schools, and the interesting and neat thing about those partnerships are those are designed to be seamless transitions. Very often you'll hear students complain, my credits didn't transfer. Well, if you do one of these partnership programs where students don't have to move to another campus, either because we're offering the program on site or the second two years of a program are being offered uh, through distance education, you'll have a seamless transfer into those programs. They were de designed that way. And those programs include the engineering program at Platteville, uh, where you can get either an, an electrical or a mechanical engineering degree. We have about 50 pre-engineering students on our campus and 20 to 30 actually taking Platteville courses right now. And we're hoping and expecting those numbers to grow as we build our engineering building on campus over the next couple of years. With Oshkosh, we offer elementary education. Uh, and they're going to be launching in the fall a special education program that I believe is going to be uh, housed in Plymouth, as well as a human services leadership program, which we believe our nonprofit organizations uh, would be interested in. And that program is going to be through interactive TV video. Some of our partners are only offering their programs online, and many of those programs are in management and business, and also an information technology program with UW-Milwaukee. So those are two ways that we are trying to meet workforce needs. We are offering a breadth of courses, and for example, the accounting. You could have a student who's now taken beginning and intermediate accounting with us, and you might already have a role for that student in your company. So there are opportunities for even our students while they're still in school uh, to have some of the skills that you might need in your businesses. But the third thing I wanted to just briefly touch on before I ended was to circle back to those general education requirements I started with and their value in preparing an educated workforce. And you've all read um, all of the articles about a liberal arts education and does that prepare you for the workforce or does that not prepare you for the workforce and there's a lot of conversation around soft skills and soft skills can range from those behavioral skills like getting to work on time and dressing appropriately for work to what I've recently seen called the foundational cognitive skills. And those skills are the critical thinking skills, the analytical skills, the quantitative skills, the communication skills. There's an organization called ATC, which most of you know about because your kids have taken the ATC test, which looks at college readiness. Well, over the last 10 years or so, that organization's beginning to look at workforce readiness as well. And they have identified these same areas and have coined that term, I believe, foundational cognitive skills. If you take 
a full range of general education courses, you're going to leave UW-Sheboygan with those skills. The UW Colleges has identified certain proficiency areas in which all students will have competency upon completion of their gen ed requirements. And those are these foundational skills. And the proficiency areas really match those foundational skills. Analytical skills, quantitative skills, communicative skills, and we also have an aesthetic skills category. But we don't just say students graduate with those skills. Faculty have actually developed, as they are all over the country now, specific performance indicators and rubrics and proficiencies proficiency is measured using common standards applied across the academic disciplines. So students in gen ed courses develop those skills that employers are, are looking for that are some of the basic cognitive skills. So these are the three ways that our campus uh, is, is helping to develop a, an educated workforce for our county. And I hope that over the years we'll be able to do more with those no commute degree programs so more students can get their degrees right here and get into the workforce right here. And also, as I said before, the opportunity to offer professional development uh, programs through continuing ed. Thank you. Mike? Thanks. Well, thanks, Jackie. Is this on? Okay. Okay. Thanks. When uh, Jackie and Dan and I were preparing for this, I couldn't help but think how fortunate uh, people in this area are, you know, to have the access to higher education. And when you think about it, for just about any career field or any path that you want to take, you can get your start here and your finish you know, in the Lakeshore area. I hope when you come to LTC, if you've been there, that you get to see firsthand the type of education that we provide. You know, when students come in by us, we hope that we're enriching their lives, but we also hope that we're strengthening their families and their communities and the employers and the economy that they work for. It's hard to go through a day without bumping into somebody that, that maybe went through LTC or went through a technical education. And when you go to a restaurant, uh, when you maybe visit a manufacturer, get your taxes done, or unfortunately, if you get in a car accident, you know, the people who respond first are all technical college or LTC grads. Actually, I, I encountered one of our graduates a couple weeks ago on my way to Madison, and uh, it just so happened I was going 65 and it was in a 55 uh, mile range. And uh, he was doing his job, I told him he was doing his job a little bit too good in order to stop me. But for whether it's in the rural area, on the farms, or through our agriculture programs, or in the cities, you know, through the businesses that you work in, you'll f f find evidence of LTC preparing uh, that workforce. So I was just going to give you a little overview about our college, talk about our program offerings, and, and what we're doing in the area of the workforce preparation. Our main campus is in Cleveland. Uh, many of you have been there, or at least driven by it. It's hard to miss uh, with our outdoor wind lab with the four uh, wind turbines that we have on campus in our climbing tower. But we're also in the job centers in Manitowoc and Sheboygan County. And there we pri provide primarily our basic skills training. We last year opened up in conjunction with Plymouth and working with Cary, uh, the Plymouth Science and Technology Center, where we work, uh, where the school uses the facility during the day and the students train in, in welding and machine tool and, and, and programs like that. But we also use it uh, to deliver high-speed machine technician training in the evening and other uh, uh, industrial type training at, at in the off hours. We just recently opened up the Lakeshore Culinary Institute and I hope you have a chance uh, to visit. It is open to the public on Wednesdays, Thursdays and Fridays. And I think when you're there, it, it really uh, it shows you the type of training that we provide. So it really mixes the classroom and the hands-on. Uh, so all the students there, you know, right away from day one, you know, they're getting the hands-on experience. And just about every program we have has either a clinical or an internship or some type of component integrated with it. We have a variety of delivery methods, uh, whether it's evening. Uh, a lot of our courses are blended online, our flexibility, which combines a number of different delivery methods and our traditional day programs. Our placement is about 80 per, 85 percent, and that's how we get measured, uh, both here at the state and with the legislature. And about 87% of our people who graduate from LTC stay local. We also are involved in a number of different community uh, service activities. Uh, we work collaboratively with Lakeland on the Voluntary Income Tax Assistance Program, where our students in the accounting program 
uh, do taxes for people who have uh, under, I think it's a $50,000 uh, income level. And we also on campus uh, work with our local dentists in providing dental care uh, through the Lakeshore Community Dental Clinic where we serve uh, Medicaid patients. And last year we served over 700 people in that area. We have about 14,000 people that we'll touch a year uh, through our different areas of business. Our average age is a little higher, about 31. Uh, we have, you know, we get a portion of students right out of high school, but we get people all throughout out their careers. About 8% of our uh, students, the people that we're serving, already have a degree. And that could be an associate degree, it could be a bachelor's degree, or it could be a master's degree. And we have a significant amount of our students are, are part-time. Uh, we have a lot, our, each one of our programs has an advisory committee, which is made up of people like you in, in the room, but made up of graduates and employers and employees. And uh, that's a key part of us staying connected and keeping our programs current. So we talked a little bit about our different career programs. Uh, so we'll have anywhere from accounting to weld wind, welding to wind energy technology in a number of different areas in business and industry, or business and technology, health and human services, public safety, energy, agriculture. And um, we have some programs that are unique to LTC. We have the only wind energy technology program in the state and one of a handful of programs uh, with that capacity in the United States. We actually have the longest running nuclear technology program in the United States on a community college campus. We also, with our Lakeshore Culinary Institute, there's other culinary schools, but we're the only one that's running in a, in a fully operating uh, restaurant. And our judicial reporting programs and manufacturing management are unique uh, programs to the state. Another area of our business is our workforce solutions, and this is where our team uh, works directly with business and industry in customizing training to meet their needs. You know, we have our, our programs, but an employer, when they're asking, uh, you know, maybe for some training, they might not want the whole program, and most of the time they don't, but they want a certain piece of that program, and uh, we'll customize what we're doing to meet their specific needs. We also run seminars uh, based on uh, just whatever the community needs primarily. What, usually what our seminars are run on are are topics that for mainly small employers that who might not be able to have enough to, you know, to have a, a customized training a session on campus. And we also have a Center for Entrepreneurship that Kristen Abel actually works with the Chamber and the Economic Development Corporation in Manitowoc County in providing service to those people who, you know, who are interested in starting a business. So when you look, a lot of our graduates have that potential. So she's not only working with uh, you know, people in the community, but working with our current students to help them if they have an idea or have a thought on starting up, uh, starting up their business. We have a number of different certi uh, certificate programs and certifications. We're actually a member of an organization called NC3, which is the National Coalition of Certification Centers. And we work with, with companies like Train and Snap-on to provide certification specific to their industry. So if you need to be certified in Torque, we can do that for you. Or certified in multimeter, uh, we can do that for you. If you need to be certified in tower climbing, uh, we can do that certification as well. And we have a number of industrial and uh, construction apprentices that we run in collaboration with the Bureau of Apprenticeship Standards and, and local employers. One thing about our enrollments, uh, they tend to go inverse of the economy. So when the economy is doing real well, We'll, we'll, our enrollments will drop off because people are working. But you know, a couple years ago, when we were at the height of unemployment, we had about 1,600 dislocated workers that were attending and enrolled in programs. So our enrollments you know, were, were at the peak. But some of the specific things that we're doing to prepare our workforce is working with our high school partners to make sure that there's a pipeline coming from the schools to higher education you know, into the workforce. Uh, Plymouth Science and Technology Center is an example. Uh, this next year, we're going to have 30 students each week from the Sheboygan schools out on campus enrolled in our welding, one of them's welding. This year we actually had two uh, students uh, from Sheboygan schools that got their technical diploma in welding uh, two weeks before they got their high school diploma. So it's things like that. And you know, when you look around at all the higher education options, you know, it's really helping students find that right option and what's, you know, what's really gonna uh, you know, excite them and what's their passion. We're also involved in the youth apprenticeship program and uh, we coordinate that in Sheboygan County. And that program, uh, three years ago, there might have been six students enrolled. Next year, they're going to have about 65. And that's a, they work, uh, it's a work-based learning where they're going to work uh, directly with the employers and also take some courses uh, from Lakeshore, Lakeshore Technical College. We recently uh, you know, literally rolled out the Advanced Manufacturing Mobile Lab. And it's a 
something that we worked down with a number of local partners, but it's a, it's a moving facility that can go out to the schools and can go out to business, uh, do training primarily in electromechanical and industrial maintenance. Uh, and we're also in the, in, in the process of expanding our programs in CNC and machining, which right now there's about 100 job openings in this area. We have capacity for about 20. Uh, we're doubling that program, and we're actually adding on a whole other depth uh, to the training. Uh, we're also doubling our welding program uh, and adding on a fabrication and robotic welding to that. Eight years ago, we did not have one full-time welding instructor. Now we have five. So you can just see you know, the growth and the demand you know, for, that type of, for that type of skill. Uh, and doing that, we're going to be adding on some square footage. It's hard to, uh, you know, we could take a room like this and we can do a lot of types of training in here. But when you're talking about CNC equipment and welding, you need a certain infrastructure. So we're, we're moving on that and we'll be breaking ground uh, next month and be ready, and be ready to uh, you know, start training in, in, uh, in January. So I, uh, you know, looking around, uh, I see Mike Brookins, you know, sitting there. Mike's an LTC grad and, and actually was our distinguished alumni. And after Mike uh, graduated from LTC, you know, he was working and he finished up his uh, degree at Lakeland College and, uh, you know, became a CPA and is a real leader in our community. And so when you look at LTC, our main job is to get people jobs. And that's what we focus on. But, but we're not a dead end. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, we can be a career provide a person a career that's going to provide a family supporting wage for the rest of their life, but we also can be that first step onto other things as well. So we're real proud to uh, work with uh, UW Sheboygan and UW Oshkosh in our collaborative nursing program where students can get their RN at Lakeshore Technical College and uh, work with UW Sheboygan, UW Manitowoc, and UW Oshkosh to finish up their bachelor's degree. We have a number of collaborations uh, going with Lakeland uh, where students start, you know, at LTC and as they're working can, you know, can advance themselves, you know, as well. So I appreciate uh, having an opportunity to share a little bit about LTC and I'll turn it over to Dan. All right, thank you, Mike, and thank you, everyone. Uh, my name is Dan Eck. I'll tell you a little bit about Lakeland and a little bit about what we're doing. Uh, Lakeland, as you know, probably, hopefully know, we're outside of Howard's Grove. Uh, our residential campus, we have about 865 students living, well, they're not all living there, about two-thirds of them live on campus, about one-third commute. Um, we have a lot of alumni here in Sheboygan County, most of them in Wisconsin as well, and some of them worldwide. I want to talk primarily today about our adult programs, our evening weekend online programs, because that's where we're very excited about what we contribute to, to the economy of the region. Um, we have seven centers around the state where people can get their bachelor's degree or a master's degree. And we also have a branch campus in Tokyo, Japan, where you can get a two-year degree. But in the evening weekend and online program, we have several majors you can choose from. Two of the newest majors we've added are a communications major, which focuses on new media, which we think is very exciting, and also psychology, which we think will provide a feeder program for our master's and counseling program. We, we also have popular programs. Our business programs and accounting programs are our most popular. Uh, about two-thirds of our students in our adult evening weekend online programs are in a business program of some sort. But as you heard Jackie say, that liberal arts education, that's the underpinning of what we do. Because when we go around and we talk to employers, time and time again we hear they need graduates who can think and solve problems and who can communicate. And that's where the liberal arts tradition, even though 80% of our graduates are in our business programs between our traditional campus and our evening program, that liberal arts foundation, even if they're not going to be a religion major or a sociology major, learning to think is very, very important because when you have somebody to do a job at your place, you don't want them to do just exactly what you tell them to do. You want them to go above and beyond that and solve the problems and then tell you what they did. And time and time again, that's where we're seeing the struggle. So that's what we want to focus on. So what we can do is provide degree completion or we can provide degrees from start to finish or the graduate degrees. And we can do it face to face out in Howard's Grove, our Sheboygan campus, or we can do it online. And the number one thing we can do right now, Lakeland College for the future, is be at the table and talk to the employers around here and see what do you need in a graduate from Lakeland, Lakeland College. And we're in the midst of a strategic planning process and that's what we're doing. We're going around, we're talking to people to make sure we're offering what's relevant because the big battle right now is what's the value of a four-year degree or a graduate degree. The jobs that are gonna be hot five years from now, 10 years from now, 
You don't know what they are. They don't exist right now. So if we can all put out graduates that can think on their feet and can react and get more education and training as they need it, they will be able to fill those jobs when those jobs come up. They'll still be in the same industry. They'll still be in tourism. They'll still be in manufacturing. They'll still be in business. But you have no clue right now what they're going to be doing. You think about how technology changes from year to year. We've got a new program now. One of the things we're really excited about in our uh, evening program is called, uh, we call it Blend Ed version 2.0. For a long time at Lakeland, we've been allowing people to take courses online or in the classroom. They can show up that night or they can say, well, I can't make it so I can log on from home or I can watch it later. So we're taking that to the next level where we have now invested in these, in these large screens. They're about six feet long, about three and a half feet tall. We've got them. We started doing this last winter in about 14 classrooms around the state. So we've got this big setup in Chippewa Falls and in Madison and in Green Bay. And we find a great professor in Madison who can teach a course that we can't find somebody in Chip to teach. They teach everything they write on the whiteboard or on their computer shows up on this computer screen. Students in Chippewa Falls and in Green Bay can take that course. Cameras, audio, they can interact from there. And if they want, if they can't make it into class, they can stay at home and watch on their cell phone or smartphone or on their computer. We have somebody taking courses through her son's Xbox right now. <laughs> and I don't think she can shoot anybody. That's version 3.0, we're still working on that. But the ability to offer this, because then we can find the faculty to teach these courses. And instead of running a course for five people, we can run it for 25 people or 30 people. And what that lets a place, and we're a private college, not, we're not for profit, but we're private. What that lets us do is reinvest the money we would have spent on offering three courses and offering different courses finding more faculty, providing financial aid for students to get them into school. So that's what we're quite excited about, the strategic planning process, because we have to make sure we've got relevant programs and they're accessible. That cost, every time you open a newspaper, you see people talking about, is it worth it? So that's what we're hitting on. We have to make sure that it's affordable for people. And also we need to make sure that we can change our programs. We have an MBA. Is it relevant? Does it do what we need to do? We're adding an insurance emphasis across our business programs right now. Wisconsin is, you know, as you know, it's a hotbed of insurance here. It's, it's just amazing how many companies they have. And they've told us that they're going to see a labor shortage in the next few years. They've got a lot of retirements coming down the pike. So in turn, we're ramping up our insurance emphasis so we can provide people with the training to fill those jobs. And we're working very closely with these insurance companies to do that. Cybersecurity is one we're starting to talk about. We've got a great criminal justice program. We've got a relatively new computer science program. It's been around, but we're ramping it up now. We're building a new lab on campus here this summer. So we're going to start talking about marrying th those two majors because cybersecurity is one of the hot areas for the future here. And why shouldn't it be here in Sheboygan County? We just placed a student intern at, uh, boy, this is going to get recorded, I know, the National Security Agency. Um, I can't say anything more about it. And the funny thing is, he can't either. All he can say is, I'm going to Maryland to work for the NSA. That's all he can say about it. But he has a double degree in, in criminal justice and computer science, and that's fantastic. Uh, we need to think about hospitality management. How do we grow that and change that? Tourism is big here. It always has been, always will be. So we're working on that as well. And overlaying all of this are the challenges facing higher ed in general. As I mentioned, that delivery model. How do you get people into the classroom if they can't get into the classroom. One of the other new things we've started just this summer in our evening program is uh, seven week courses. Traditionally they're either 12 or 14 weeks. But we found some courses that we believe people can get through and still get a quality education in seven weeks. That's gonna allow people to move faster to their degree. If they can do it, if they're smart enough and they're willing to put that work in, why shouldn't they be able to take courses twice as fast as other people and get out and get back to work? That's something we're very excited about. We're going to be expanding that this fall as well. Uh, our career services department, we're reinvigorating that as well uh, because that's an area when you talk about the cost value proposition of higher education, if you can't show people working with that degree, you know, it's still valuable, sure. There will still be a need for people who study philosophy and sociology and things like that because they become professors or they do. I was an anthropology major, okay? So there's still value in that, you still learn, but we need to make sure that people understand what type of jobs you can get and help them find those jobs. That's one thing that, you know, as you heard from other people up here, we're gonna be contacting everybody here to see how can we get our students jobs. But it's on us to make sure the majors are relevant and that they're skilled enough to get into that, uh, into that workforce. 
So we want to work more on our partnerships here. We've opened up a few other ones. We've got a new aviation miner. Aviation will have a demand all over the world, the same as insurance. And now we're working on uh, trying to make sure we can recruit international students to study in our aviation minor. Uh, Asia will have an incredible demand for pilots. Uh, it may not seem as relevant to uh, Sheboygan County as you think, but it's relevant to the global economy. Uh, transport in aviation is a huge, huge business. And if they can't find enough pilots to do it, things made here aren't going to get where they need to be. So that's an area of growth for us. It brings uh, money into the economy here. But overall, on, on top of this, we have to think about the quality. There are a lot of people out there putting their feet, both feet first, into online education and adult education. The for-profits, and some of them do it well, but a lot of them do it quick and cheap, and they take people's money, and the people fail out, and they don't get a degree that's worth anything. So we have to make sure while we do this, we don't just open the floodgates and take people's money and not give them something as value of value because then we're not doing anybody any good. We're not doing the college any good. We're not doing the community any good. So that's kind of the exciting things we're doing. We're going to try to be uh, at the table. Uh, Lakeland, you know, sometimes we feel like we're kind of out in the cornfield, but we need to make sure we're in here, in town, in all the other towns around the county, talking to people and making sure we remain relevant. Um, we're not going to do everything. You know, we've got LTC and UW Sheboygan that can do things better than we can do, and that's fantastic, and that's great for this county. So we're, we're content with that. We're not going to try to do what they do, and we're going to continue to partner with them for the benefit of the county. So at this point, I think I've said enough, and I think I'll turn it over if you have questions for Mike or Jackie, and I'll just step aside, or me. I'll answer some as well. So thank you. Um, let's step here. Yeah. Jackie, you want to come up? and Mike and Jackie want to come up if, for any questions that you might have? Does anybody have any questions of them? Okay, well, uh, Jerry? Uh, I haven't heard much lately in the county about intern programs, and, and I'm not sure if those are kind of going away, coming back, or are they, are they supportive of some of these foundational skill things, and just general comments on intern programs? Okay, question was on um, what, uh, what is available for internship programs, and um, probably all of you have an answer for that. Who, who would like to go? Mike, you probably, you, internships are a big part of your program. Yeah, most of it, particularly in our business area, uh, have interns. And, and we have uh, somebody who coordinates internships on our campus. Uh, so we work uh, you know, with the local businesses. They call up. You know, we try to make a match. Uh, one, one specific example is at Jake's Cafe, where we have an office at Jake's Cafe. And I know, you know Dan is there at Lakeland, too. So our students, whether it could be our web design students, our marketing students, our administrative professionals, work there and they serve as interns to the businesses that are incubating you know, in, in Jake's Cafe. But as I mentioned earlier, uh, just about every one of our programs either has an internship component or a clinical you know, component uh, to it. I just want to add one thing to what Mike said. We, we do the same thing. But where we see this working, and I'm, I'm sure Mike and Jackie would agree, hopefully they'd agree, is that it's a good way for you to test out people and get them kind of acclimatized to your environment and see how they work. I was a lawyer in Chicago uh, before I, I moved into higher ed, and as a law student, that internship is the way you found your job. So the more students we can get trying out your company and you trying them out, you know, the better it is. And since most of what we do are actually the liberal arts, we don't have quite a formal internship program, but certainly in our engineering program, we're beginning to uh, place students as businesses uh, tell us they have an interest in having our students come and do an internship. We could do the same thing, as I said, with business students, that kind of thing. Uh, Beth, you want, you want them to identify a person in their agency or in their institution as a contact for internships? Yeah, that, that's the way yeah. it okay. Our contact is Fua Hang. You want to? Yeah. Did everybody hear that? No. Well, okay. I think we'd probably circulate that, right? Okay. <clears throat> Good idea. Yeah, okay. I would be interested as a business if I wanted to contact any of those colleges and was interested to see if somebody wanted an interest in the right. profession. Who would I call? I talk better than I type, so. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. We'll we'll follow up and we'll get something out as far as contacts and maybe other summaries. So, um, Katie. Well, and on that note, yeah. and Mike, isn't there a website where you can post 
post uh, these things, and then you actually get access to resumes of people who match your uh, internship. Okay. If you could put that in the information as well, that would be helpful. Okay, great, thanks. Steve? You know, this is probably an example of, of how the face of higher education is changing almost right in front of our very eyes of moving. You know, they have three folks up here representing different campuses, and you probably used to be in um, competition, and now it seems like we're getting into more of a collaborative type of setting, and that the very idea of, of surveying the community and then probably trying to provide relevant programming almost seems to be brand new, where it used to be, we will build it, they will come. Is there anything that the chamber can do to help facilitate that? I mean, I'm hearing each of you have an advisory board or some kind of outreach program to interview companies. Is there a method that the chamber could help to facilitate in terms of round tables or uh, opportunities for to bring these folks together in one place rather than each of you kind of doing your own thing? Or is that not been the collaborative part you're looking for? Yeah, I think, the, I mean, maybe to summarize is that what can the chamber do to help the two of you, or the three of you all work together to further um, educational opportunities in our county. So, who would like to take that first? Uh, yeah. Well, you know, I think, uh, you know, Dan and Jackie and I, you know, talk and, you know, that's a key thing right there. You know, and I think a lot of times, you know, if I look and I see, you know, uh, you know Kurt Joa and, and Old Wisconsin, you both are manufacturers, right? But you're different. I mean, you, and I think that's the thing we try to say that we each have distinct missions. And so I think when we're out there working, it might, you know, we're not really uh, doing our own thing. You know, I think we're kind of, you know, talking and, and we may be talking at different levels with different people. But I think uh, round tables help. I think, you know, having education and workforce is a topic like you're doing. You know, bringing in Mary Icebister, you know, in, in August. You know, so things like that I think help. You know, it provides good input to you know the three of us in working with our staff, in in uh, you know trying to meet your you know meet your needs. I know the you know the business education committee you know, that you have is a good you know good way for us to stay connected to business as well. Oh, I don't know if anybody else? One quick thing. Mm -hmm. I think as any group like the chamber and other groups here talk about trying to bring business to Sheboygan County in the region. Anytime you want to involve our organizations in talking to potential companies that want to come here we'd be interested in doing that. And we've done that at Lakeland with some companies that have been coming in, some chemical companies and other ones. We get them together with our faculty and talk about, here's what we could provide if you move here. So we're always willing to be part of those pitches that you're making to try to get companies interested. Other, other questions? Anybody has? Okay, no other questions? Well, I think then that's, uh, that'll be it. We want to thank uh, uh, Jackie and Mike and Dan for giving us an overview on sort of the things we're working on. And I think what we've learned is not, so often we don't always appreciate sort of the top-notch um, organizations, institutions we have in Sheboygan County. We know we have world-class, top-notch manufacturing service business. We just found out if we didn't fully realize it, that we have top-notch um, secondary educational facilities. So thanks again. And maybe what I might just sort of follow or end with, um, it was alluded to the, I think um, Mike or Dan mentioned the the Chamber of Business Education, and, and you'll hear more, and I don't want to kind of say a lot, but um, the Chamber has been active on trying to look to bring business and education closer together so that um, we do a better job of uh, training our uh, people to be working in our industries. And um, I think you're gonna probably see some developments in that area in a very short time. So there's a committee that's very active, a group of people who are very active. In fact, I think they may be meeting today to further those efforts. So stay tuned. Over that corner. Yeah, over that corner, yeah. So um, with that, if uh, no one has anything else they'd like to announce, uh, then uh, we'll come to a close and uh, have a great weekend. Looks like maybe good weather's on its way, finally. So.